Oh, joining me now is Congressman Mark Green. He represents Tennessee's 7th Congressional District, and he's the chairman of the Homeland Security Committee. Sir, good to have you with us. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Vince, for having me. Uh, you are in such an important position as chairman of the Homeland Security Committee, and I, and I do want to begin on the issue of Homeland Security. As we see all of the headlines coming out about the terrorist attack in Israel, can you give us an, a, a, a kind of a picture of what our own security situation is like right now in light of that? Well, we've had 1.7 million gotaways that are known gotaways, and then we've got some number of uh, T4Ts when he was the chief of the Border Patrol said at least 20 percent more that are unknown gotaways. I'd submit that's probably much higher from the videos, the game footage, game camera footage I've seen from the ranchers. Um, you know, it's it, we don't know who those people are. We know that we've captured terrorists at the crossing sites, but uh, are at the uh, you know ports of entry, but. We don't know. I mean, it's it's almost guaranteed that there's someone in that group. Plus, add to that the twenty thousand uh, Chinese nationals that have come into the United States. I mean, it, it, this is it's a toxic cocktail, and it's all on the hands of Joe Biden and uh, Alejandro Mayorkas. I see Fox's Bill Malusian sharing some really haunting numbers here of uh, people who have come across the border illegally over the last two years from the Middle East. We have. 538 from Syria, 139 from Yemen. Iran has 659. Afghanistan, 6,386. It goes on and on. Turkey, 30,830 people. These are just people uh, that were apprehended by the Border Patrol. Um, we've got a lot of strangers in this country, and we, we just don't know who they are or what their intentions are, Congressman. Well, that's exactly right. There are no guarantees that they're not Hamas cells here. I mean, we just don't know because of the failure to secure our border. And, uh, you know, even in the, at our, this is a really important statistic to know, you know, at our crossing sites, we catch murderers, rapists, uh, obviously known drug traffickers and terrorists. So if there's a percentage that actually turn themselves in, what's the percentage of all those people in the, in the group that is intentionally avoiding border patrol? Probably at least that much. Sure. So multiply that times 1.7 million, and that's a lot of bad guys in America allowed by Secretary Mayorkas. We know the you know the Justice Department uh, has has charged uh, various people, uh, including uh, Venezuelans, over the connection to terrorism, and, and that includes Hamas and Hezbollah. Uh, they were trying to basically prepare actual attacks on the United States. Um, what do we know about Hamas's reach, and how concerned should we be that it, it could strike here? Well, their, their reach is global. They are funded by Iran, so they have the capacity to clearly move down to uh, Central America, pay a cartel, and come up here. So their, their reach is global. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a terror organization whose purpose is to destroy the state of Israel, the little Satan, and because they're aligned with Iran to destroy the great Satan, which is the United States. So, I mean, the risk, again, the risk is very high. And uh, these are evil people. They need to be they need to be uh, destroyed. Yes. Are you concerned that this attack in Israel took place without any? It seems like it was an intelligence failure because uh, Israel missed it. And of course, I would think the United States would be all over this if we knew about it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have such a great relationship with, and I was an ex Night Stalker. If you saw the movie Black Hawk Down, that, you know, that was my unit. And I worked with our tier one assets. Uh, we, and I worked with Israel. I mean, we have great relationships with these guys. We would have absolutely shared. So to say it's only Israel's failure is a, is a, is a, a huge mistake. We've got to dig into, was this a data collection issue? Was it a data analysis issue? Or was it a political decision maker who said, I don't agree with the analysis or, you know, let's not notify anybody. We have to get in that loop, that chain, and find out where the failure was uh, and fix it and fix it yesterday. Um, you, uh, you, your committee has just released a report on what you refer to as the staggering human costs of the unprecedented border crisis. Uh, and the top lines here really are jarring, including that more than 150,000 Americans have died over the last two years from synthetic opioid poisonings, uh, fentanyl, that is. Give us a sense yeah. of what you found in this report. 
Yeah, so as we did our, our – this is phase three of our five-phase five investigation, the human cost, and we, we found massive increases in human trafficking, prostitution of young girls. We found you know increased drug trafficking, which has resulted in the death of Americans. We found a nexus to uh, the criminal activity, the gangs. So the gangs in the United States cities have connected now with the cartels, and it's one criminal enterprise. Um, we found migrants who were dead on the border, uh, highest numbers ever, so much so that uh, Homeland Security stopped reporting the number. They won't give us the number of, the, of dead migrants found at the border. Um, we talked to Border Patrol agent spouses who, who described the, you know, I recognize it as PTSD because of my time in the military and as a physician. Uh, what she described of her husband having horrible dreams and waking up in the middle of the night, you know, depression, anger, all these uh, varied emotions because they're simply overwhelmed, number one. And number two, they're not allowed to do their job. So the job they signed up for, they're processing immigrants instead of actually being law enforcement officers. And it's just they're boiling with anger at the uh, you know, secretary tying their hands. Um, can you talk a little bit about these fentanyl deaths? I I'm, I know that certainly uh, the precursor chemicals are coming from China. The cartels are cooking it up in Mexico. Then it's coming into the United States. Uh, but I know the nature of the opioid crisis in the United States has certainly changed over the last decade or so. Uh, and that includes that there are a number of people who are dying taking medications that they don't even realize have fentanyl inside of them. Uh, I heard Vivek Ramaswamy describe this as biological warfare. If they were to put this into a Big Mac, that's exactly what we would call it. Uh, they don't realize they're taking fentanyl and then they're dead. Um, what is What do the data show in terms of, of the nature of these deaths? One of the things that's probably the most frustrating is, you know, the young people who think they're taking a Xanax at a party and it's laced with fentanyl. So, you, you you know, that's the unintentional uh, fentanyl overdose death. You you know, you have people who are addicted to opioids like heroin and, and Percocet and the prescription stuff, and they wind up buying a fentanyl to fix an addiction, and they, they can sometimes die. Right. Uh, and then you have, you know, innocent bystanders like the little baby and, in uh, Florida that was crawling around on the floor of a VRBO and, and got, got fentanyl that was left by the previous renter and died. And, and so the, the point of it all is there's no place in America that's safe. I mean, we all stay in hotels occasionally. How do you know that the guy before you didn't leave some fentanyl on the ground and your kid, or you step on it? I mean, it, it absorbs through the skin very easily. Fentanyl lollipops, fentanyl patches, this stuff is sold and manufactured that way by our pharmaceuticals. So it, skin absorption is real and it will kill you. And so I think the, the, the point I'd love for every American to realize is because of this open border, because of uh, Alejandro Mayorkas facilitating drug trafficking, aiding and abetting drug trafficking, there's not an American who's safe. How wealthy have the cartels become uh, based on all of this death and destruction? Great question. And just this last year, I believe it was uh, more people, they made more money trafficking humans than they made with drugs. It's around 15 billion with people and around 13 billion with drugs. So, you know, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't know if we can be too harsh, but Joe Biden seems to be responsible for enriching the cartels, sir. There's no doubt about it, 100 percent. I mean, and they just – they know what they're doing. I mean, even Merrick Garland talked about the strategy of the cartels. And then Mayorkas got in there and said he didn't know it, So I, I mean, which I, I don't believe him. I mean, if Merrick Garland is aware of it, you know, Mayorkas has to be aware, but um, he's either ignorant or a liar. It's, it's honestly uh, really shameful. Staggering. Um, you know, Jake yeah, Sullivan – leaves you speechless. Yeah, it does. Jake Sullivan is the national security advisor. Just a few minutes ago, he said that the Biden administration is concentrated on a humane solution to the border challenges. Uh, do you detect any humanity there? No, we're talking dead Americans. Uh, I don't see that as humane. I don't see uh, a humane solution for the migrants that are dying, for the migrants that get trafficked into the United States. And then in order to pay their debt back, they have to commit crimes inside the United States. This happens every day. 
no, this isn't humane. It's humane to close the border and go through an asylum process and let people, uh, you know, if, if they are, it's very interesting. The UN Charter says any nation who has um, a migrant come into their country it, 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 claiming asylum has a responsibility to address that issue and not pass it on. All these countries through Central America, I mean, these people just track right through and they, they come on up to the United States. They should remain in Mexico at a minimum um, unless they're Mexican. Yes. Right? And, they're fleeing, and then we know that. So it, it's it's um, I don't know. It just it boggles the mind. It does. It totally boggles the mind. I, I, another committee in, in the House, the Judiciary Committee, released a report this week that says that 99 percent of all illegal immigrants uh, who make it into the United States stay here under Joe Biden. That is just 1% get deported. That's not an immigration system, Congressman Mark Green. No, no, it is not. And look, they want to fundamentally change our country. And they think, and I think wrongly so, but they think that folks will come here, they'll have children, those children become United States citizens, and in a you know 18 years or so, they vote. And they think they're going to vote Democrat. And they're willing to accept the death of Americans the trafficking of uh, human beings, um, the enriching of the cartels, and yes. all the bad stuff associated with it just just for their own power. Do you think that there's a case to be made to impeach Joe Biden on this alone? For, put aside all the corruption of his family. This issue seems like a total violation of his oath of office and, and the kind of thing that warrants removal. Yeah, the question will be is, and this will be hard for us to get to, but I mean, we will we will get we will go through and do it and attempt to to tie the decisions made by the secretary to directives from the White House. So if you're going to go after Biden, you have to say, okay, where's the emails and where's the transcripts from you know discussions? And did Joe Biden tell Alejandro Mayorkas to go execute this policy? And if the answer is yes, then the aiding and abetting goes back to Joe Biden. If if not, and we can't make that tie, we know Mayorkas has uh, done so. Yes, and I, I remember um, it was it was Kevin McCarthy when he was speaker. He said, well, actually before he became speaker last year, he indicated uh, on a visit to the border that uh, you know one way yeah, or the I'll other you were with him. So you remember the threat he made, which is either resign or we're going to consider impeaching you. Uh, and we've kind of been waiting, I think a lot of us, perhaps impatiently, for Mayorkas to be impeached. Yeah, I understand that, and I'm I'm frustrated too. But the problem is, is we have to convince the American people, and they have to call their congressmen and and ensure that their congressmen will vote. Yeah. And in order to get there, I developed the five phases to be very methodical, go through the process. You know, the first thing we did was we got in, we formed the committee, and we passed the uh, border security bill. That was the that, that was the priority. Right. And then we flipped into the investigation, and so. Um, you know, we're, in, we, we just finished phase four. We're going into the last phase, you know, and we got America's coming before us November 15th. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah. I mean, for us to, to, to hammer this guy with the truth. Finally, Congressman Mark Green, and thank you for being generous with your time. Um, these, the, yeah, sure. the organizations, the, the NGOs that have been trafficking humans into the country, uh, who are given millions of dollars each year by the federal taxpayers, um, how important is it to get them defunded to stop this? So there are some NGOs that are doing good things. So it's not all the NGOs that are bad. But there are a group of NGOs who are facilitating the human trafficking by not only coordinating with the cartels to tell them which uh, crossing sites have a volume or where there are hotel space in the NGOs, uh, so that people don't have to get detained elsewhere. They get to go straight into a hotel. Um, but they're also, you know, paying for them to, to come throughout the United States, uh, paying for their legal services, which is actually against the law. Um, so it, those NGOs are the ones we want to target. Uh, well, I, I, Godspeed. I wish you all the luck in the world as you, as you go after them. Uh, Congressman Mark Green, thank you very much. Good to have you with us today.